Radiotity GMRS. Radiotity has a brand new GMRS mobile radio, the DB20G. Small, compact GMRS Part 95 certified. Let's take a look. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio, but also GMRS radio, FRS radio, CB radio, Marine Band radio. Got one of those videos upcoming. Thank you for joining the channel today. My name's Jason. I'm KC5 HWB in the Ham Radio world. I am WRFK311 in the GMRS world. So thank you for being here. Radio Oddity released a new DB20G mobile radio. This thing's actually quite small. I have been kind of tinkering with it for a short while, and we're going to look at this right here. This is the this is the manual. I took this out a second ago. Instruction manual. It's got that. Upon first glance, it looks like it has. It's the size of one of those old Lyxon VV898 radios. In fact, it looks almost just like it. So, single SO239 on the back, external speaker. It's got a plug for a cigarette lighter adapter, so it must not draw too many amps, if that's the case. There's the screen of the radio right there. That is the programming cable, so you can program your own channels into it and rename them to something you want. You could probably program some listening channels in there as well. The microphone clip, there's the microphone right there, and a mobile mounting bracket. This one right here, you don't really need a removable face because it's so darn small. In fact, for reference, here is my, move that out of the way, this is my smartphone right here. So that's how, this is a Samsung Galaxy S8. It is not one of the, it's one of the smaller Galaxy models. It's actually about four generations old. It is that size there. So there's the size reference for it. Here's a beer coaster. How's that? <laughs> but it's a pretty small radio. I think it's rated at about 20 watts, if I'm not mistaken. But we're going to look at that here in a minute and see what kind of power output we can get from it. So stand by. All right, so here's the microphone. That's what that looks like right there. Pretty beefy mic. Not bad. Here it is in channel one. This is your volume knob here. In order to get from channel to channel, you have to hit this, channel 500. It's got 500 channels in it. Those are empty channels. I'm going to guess that those are empty channels. If you look at the top of the screen right now, it says channel 500. And then right above that, it says 500 in smaller case. But if you go to channel 1, you've got 001S. So these are programmed channels. Should go through 22. Oh, these, okay. So those are your simplex channels. You see the, the blue plus mark pop up right there as I went to channel 23 right here. So this is an offset. These are your repeater channels. There's probably about six of these. And then it jumps to 494. So there's no really telling what uh, will not let me transmit on that. I don't know if you can hear that in there or not. Okay, so it won't let me transmit on that frequency, whatever it is. Fun is your function button. Fun button is function. They left the C off, but it's function. There's that. Hit the function, it goes into the menu. You can go through these menus here. This is your VFO, so you can go through and monitor frequencies. It will not transmit. That's inside the amateur radio band. And since this is a GMRS radio, it will not transmit there. I can type in from the keypad here. Since that's not a true GMRS channel, it won't go there either. So it's not transmitting out of band, which is good. We don't want it to transmit out of band if it's going to be a Part 95 radio. 
here you go right here. So we're going to go back to main and I'm going to go up here to channel one. And there we're going right there. WRFK 311. The function menu is a little bit weird. If you hit function and go into the menu, you can see at the yellow text towards the bottom, the up and down arrows don't do anything. But these two buttons at the left, the VM and the main button, reset to factory is 30. Turn on your CTCSS tone, your signaling, wide narrow, repeater lock. You can name the channel right there. Comp is off, NC is off. It's got five tone and two tone. We don't really use that in um, most of our radio circles. It's more of a commercial thing. DSP sub, beep, so I can turn the beep off. I don't know if you can hear the beep in the camera right now. Squelch, scan, light, I can adjust the light. There you go. So I can adjust the light. Just like that. That's kind of neat. Some of these, some of these lesser expensive radios don't ha let you have a backlight adjust, so it's good that this one does. Reset to factory. There we go, right there. Okay, so go out of there. And I didn't see a power setting. So let's let's go back in here and look for a power setting. Don't see a power setting in there. Then look at the microphone here. All right, so this I just discovered. This is NL right there at the top. Most likely that's narrow low. So the first seven channels are on low power. Channels eight through 22 are all on high power, including your repeater offset channels. Okay, good. I'm going to guess some of these don't line up with some of the other... Okay, so if we're on low power right there, WRFK 311, WRFK 311 testing, we got a good six and a half watts on low power, really low S one to one to five uh, low SWR going into a dummy load. So now I'm going to go up here to the what I presume is the high channel here. I could I could figure this out by looking at the manual, but where was the fun in that? Here we go. Nope. Well, let me transmit there. Okay, high power right there. WRFK 311 testing, one, two, three, four, five. S uh, just about 17 watts, really good SWR on the bottom there. Almost no reflection, which means that there's not power coming back into the radio, so that's a good, uh, that's a good outlook, right? 17 watts. Uh, WRFK 311 testing, one, two, three, four, five. Go here, and that's an offset channel, WRFK 311 testing, one, two, three, four, five, about 15 watts there. Not the same there. WRF, WRFK 311 testing, one, two, three, four, five. So that is what the screen looks like. And that is what the power on the unit looks like. And that's not bad. For a little radio of that size, that is not a bad power rate. So it's advertised on the Radio Oddity website as a 20 watt. GMRS Mobile 500 channels UHF VHF scanner with sync and a repeater capable. Repeater capable just simply means that it it can it can transmit and receive on two different frequencies as an offset version. Um, so it doesn't mean that the radio itself can act as a repeater. It means that it can if you key up the radio, it'll transmit on a different frequency, what's called a repeater offset. And then when you let go of the microphone button, it goes back to its listing frequency, which is the repeater offset as well. So it's repeater capable. Not all most of your late model radios are all repeater capable. That's um, not uncommon these days. But at the same time, some of the older models or some of the stuff you might get on eBay is not exactly repeater capable. And a lot of GMRS guys may not know what a repeater is if you're new into it. So just look for that uh, look for that function there. But uh, plug and play GMRS mobile radio, easy to install with cigarette power plug in your vehicle. So pretty much every vehicle has that. But it's advertising 20 watts, presumably on high. It's doing about 17 right now, so that's pretty darn close. It's possible my power source is, you, you can see at the top of the screen there, that it's at 11.9 volts right now. So my power source, I'm running on a battery. 
running on battery. I don't have a cigarette lighter power adapter in the shack. Okay, so if I was to take it out to the vehicle, start my engine up, run it on 13.8 volts, it would probably do a little bit more than 20 watts. It's doing 17 watts, just under 12 volts. So that does make a difference. So if you're sitting there using the radio with the car turned off and you're running the battery down, it's coming down from 13 and a half, down to 12 and a half, down to 12, down to 11 and a half, your power output is going to diminish as the voltage on your battery gets lower. So, but it's cool that this radio has an indicator up at the top right of the screen that says, hey, this is what your voltage is right now. So you can look at that as you're, especially since it's plugged into the cigarette lighter and you might be using it while you're camping, while you're taught, while you've destinated for your overlanding spot and you got your tent and your, your, uh, your rhino rack and, and your pop-up camper set up in the back of your truck. Maybe you're transmitting, maybe you're using the radio to talk to someone else and you can watch the indicator at the top right of the screen to let that'll tell you what your battery voltage is so you don't kill your battery that's a, an important thing so uh what do you think about this radio who's got it who's interested in it put a comment below let me know what you think 73 and that is ham radio speak for see ya